Thank you very much for your interest in this video. Today is a new moon day, beginning the second biblical month. We thank our Heavenly Father for this brand new month, the beginning of the second biblical month. Today in the man-made calendar, today in the man-made calendar, today is the uh, Thursday, 20th of April. Thursday, 20th April, 2023, in the Roman calendar. But in the calendar of our Heavenly Father, we are, today is the first day, the first day of the second month. And the first tiny crescent of the moon came out this evening. I saw the first tiny crescent of the moon. It was extremely tiny, very, very tiny. Most people in the rest of the world did not see it. But I saw it with my eyes. I took this picture you're looking at right now. I took this picture with my phone uh, of the moon. So the moon came out this evening being Thursday, 28th of April in the Roman calendar. This means that Sabbath is going to be the next four Thursdays. Sabbath is going to be seven days from today because the first crescent of the moon came out this evening. Thursday in the man-made calendar, April 28th. So Sabbath is going to be seven days from today. That will be uh, Thursday, April 27th will be the next Sabbath or the, the, the first Sabbath of this month. And the moon is going to be half. If you step outside on the evening of uh, 27th of April, the evening or the night of 27th of April and look up in the sky, I guarantee you, you will see a half moon. The moon is going to be half because that's going to be the Sabbath. And then seven days after, on May 4th, the 4th of May, the moon is going to look full. The moon is going to look um, like a full moon. And then seven days after, on Thursday, the, 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 the 11th of April, uh, 11th of May, May 11th, the moon is going to look half again. And then the last Sabbath is going to be on Thursday, the 18th of the 18th of May. May 18th will be the last Sabbath of this second month. So these are the days that Sabbath is going to be. So Sabbath is not going to be on, on, on Saturday as we have been told. No, Saturday is the seventh day of the man-made calendar. Just in case for those who don't know, Sabbath is not on Saturday. Sabbath is not on Sunday. Sabbath is based on the phases of the moon. Sabbath is based on the that the phases of the moon that the Most High created when He created this world, as you see in Genesis chapter one, Genesis chapter one, verse fourteen to sixteen, Genesis one fourteen to sixteen. If you read it, you will see that our Heavenly Father created the sun and the moon and the stars to be His calendar. That is what He created, Genesis one fourteen to sixteen. So Saturday is not the Sabbath day. Sunday is not the Sabbath day, and and you know what? For the sake of those who may not know, for the sake of a brother who may not know or a sister who may not know, I would like to share this video. Let me share this video. Please take a look at this video before we continue. Take a look at this and then we'll come back and continue. Uh, I will begin. I have a lot of information I would like to give you in this video. A lot more information about when the Sabbath days are going to be and when the new moon day is going to be and how to calculate it. I will also leave my contact information as you can see. Uh, on the screen you can call me after watching this video if you have any question you're more than welcome to give me a call but first take a look at this video and then we'll come back and continue we began this sermon by quoting genesis 1 14 and god said let there be lights in the heaven to divide the day and the night and let them be for signs or signals when i was in washington talking to pastor mark blitz he asked me if I'd ever considered the study of the lunar eclipse with regard to a prophetic signal. I said, no. He said, you should. So I came home and thinking about what the pastor had said, I sat down at my computer and began to work. I knew that our Bible, this one, was written on the lunar calendar. Our calendar, the Western civilization calendar is the Gregorian calendar from Pope Gregory of Rome. That means it's pagan in or origin. It's not God's calendar. Our calendar and the calendar of this book do not match. 
Sun God is for Sunday. Moon God is for Monday. That's a sermon for another time. Believe me, much of what Christianity salutes is pagan to its roots. The thought registered in my brain that maybe the heavens are God's billboard and he's sending us a signal, but we're not getting it. So I began to look up. So the man you saw in this video is a Christian pastor. This was a Christian pastor admitting that God's calendar is the moon. He's admitting. That's why I love to show this video because you hardly have Christian pastors admit something like this. This pastor is a pastor of a mega church, mega church, and he for once opened his mouth and admitted the truth that God's calendar is the moon. Saturday is not the Sabbath day. Sunday is not the Sabbath day. We are not supposed to be worshiping on Saturday, 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 every Saturday or every Sunday, 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 Sunday. No, no. Saturday is the seventh day in the man-made calendar. Saturday is the seventh day in this Roman calendar. This is the Roman calendar. This calendar is called the Gregorian calendar. This is the, the name of this calendar that the whole world is using today is the Gregorian calendar. And it's named after Pope Gregory. This man right here, he is the one that instituted this calendar in the year 1582 AD. 1582 AD. This is why this calendar is called the Gregorian calendar. So in this Gregorian Roman calendar, in this calendar that was instituted by a Roman Catholic Pope, in this Roman calendar, Saturday is the seventh day. Saturday is the seventh day in this calendar. But this calendar is not the calendar you see in the Bible. The ancient Israelites did not use this calendar. When you read the Bible, when you read your scriptures, you will see that the ancient Israelites was using the moon. They were using the moon. Example, 1 Samuel chapter 20. 1 Samuel chapter 20. I recommend, I urge you, please read 1 Samuel chapter 20. 1 Samuel chapter 20. Look at verse 5. Look at what David said in verse 5. First Samuel chapter 20. Look at verse 18. Look at what David said in verse 18. What Jonathan said in verse 18. Look at verse 18 and see what Jonathan said in verse 18 and verse 19 of First Samuel chapter 20. And then look at verse 24 to 27. First Samuel 24 to 27. First Samuel 24 to 27, verse 24 to verse 27, you will see that these people were using the moon. The ancient Israelites used the moon as their calendar. You, it's very clear. Whenever you see the word the month in the Bible, whenever you see that word the month in the Bible, it's actually referring to the moon. If you look up the word the month in the Hebrew language, the word the month means new moon. It means new moon. Look into it and you will see for yourself. You can even Google it and look into it. Google month, Hebrew strong concordance or, or month, Hebrew definition. Month, Hebrew definition. Look into something like that. You will see that month means, uh, means new moon. It has to do with the moon. That's where the word month came from. That word month is from the moon. Month, month, month. And also, if you look at places like ecclesiasticus ecclesiasticus in the apocrypha if you look at Ecc ecclesiasticus or the book called syrac that book has two names ecclesiasticus or syrac chapter 43 verse 6 to 8 chapter 43 verse 6 to 8 if you look into that chapter you will see that the it says that the moon is what we're supposed to use to identify feast days if we want to know our feast days our worship days we look at the moon the moon as you see in verse 7 ecclesiasticus chapter 43 verse 6 to 6 to 8 and then look at verse 7 and see what it says so if you go to leviticus 20 leviticus chapter 23 you see that sabbath is a feast day 
Sabbath is the first of the feast day that the Messiah told us to observe. In Leviticus 23, he tells us that these are the feast days you're going to observe. These are my feast days. And Sabbath was the first one. So if you go back to Ecclesiasticus chapter 43, verse 6 to 8, you see that the moon is what we use to identify our feast days, our worship days. This is the reason why we do not observe Passover in January 14. Because January 14 is based on man-made calendar. January 14 is based on man-made calendar. You do not observe Passover in January 14th. Normally, you do it in the month of either in March or April in the man-made calendar. So, the Sabbath is based on the phases of the moon. When you see the first crescent of the moon, then seven days after that is your Sabbath. When you see the first crescent of the moon, the first tiny crescent of the moon, like as I saw it this evening, I saw it this evening, the first tiny crescent of the moon came out that means that sabbath is going to be seven days from today because sabbath is always on the seventh day so the first crescent of the moon can come out on monday if you see the first tiny crescent of the moon on monday that means that the next monday is going to be the sabbath and sabbath will be on mondays in, in the man-made calendar for that month the first crescent of the moon can come out on tuesday the first crescent of the moon can come out on Wednesday. The first crescent of the moon, like for example, last month, last month, the first crescent of the moon came out on Wednesday. It came out on Wednesday, March 22, 22nd of March 2023 was when the last first, uh, last first crescent of the moon came out. Now this month, the first crescent of the moon, this tiny crescent of the moon came out on, it uh, came out today being Thursday. The 20th of April, it came out. Next month, next month, next new moon is going to be on the, it's going to come out uh, on the 20, uh, 20th of May. 20th of May will be when the next crescent of the moon is going to come out. On a Saturday, it's going to come out on Saturday. It's going to come out on, on Saturday, 20th of, uh, of May. That will be the next first crescent of the moon. So this coming new moon, we're going to have a two days new moon. This coming new moon. So the, the 19th and the 20th of May will be new moon days. 19th and the 20th of May. We will have two days new moon day. Just like you see in 1 Samuel chapter 20. In 1 Samuel chapter 20, they had a two days new moon day. Now, if you want to understand two days new moon day, please look under this video. I have a special video dedicated to two days new moon day. If you watch that video, you will see biblical proof that we do have two days new moon day sometimes. Not all the time. Like last month, we had a two days new moon day. Last month, the 21st and 22nd of March 2023 was a new moon day. Now, this month, like today, we only have one day new moon. Like yesterday was the last Sabbath. Today is a new moon. And tomorrow is the first work day. This Friday, 21st of April, is the first work day. We work for six days. We rest on the seventh day. It's very simple. So coming up, this coming new moon is going to be a two days new moon day. May 19th and May 28th will be a new moon days. And the first crescent of the moon will most likely come out on May, the evening of May 28th. That will be on a Saturday evening. That means that the upper Saturday will be the Sabbath. Now, if the moon can, can come out on Friday, if the moon come out on Friday, then the next Friday will be the Sabbath. Like now, the first crescent of the moon came out today being Thursday. That means that next Thursday will be the Sabbath because Sabbath is always on the seventh day always on the seventh day this is very simple so whenever you see the first crescent of the moon there are some apps you can download that will help you to know when the first crescent of the moon is going to be i can say you can look under this video and see link you will see a bunch of links i posted under this video you can also contact me if you have any question you're more than welcome to give me a call if you have any question you can call me actually 24 hours a day you can give me a call 20 anytime 24 hours a day it doesn't matter if it's daytime or nighttime you can call me anytime if you have any question uh, uh, regarding any of this i will be more than happy to talk to you and answer your questions if you have any question so sabbath is not on saturday sabbath is based on the phases of the moon and sabbath is seven days from the new moon day and on the sabbath day usually the moon will look half 
when you see a half moon that is usually a sabbath seven days later the moon will look full that's a sabbath seven days later the moon will look half again that's a sabbath so for example now that the first crescent of the moon came out this evening being thursday evening in the roman calendar now that the first crescent of the moon came out this evening so next thursday which is the 27th of april 27th of april 2023 i guarantee you the moon is going to look half if you do not see a half moon on april 27th if you don't see a half moon then you will know that what i'm telling you is not it's not true check it out i know what i'm telling you go and check it and you will see you're going to see a half moon it's going to be next thursday 27th of april you will see a half moon and then that's your sabbath you see a half moon that's your sabbath then next week at the upper week which is the 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 may the the fourth of may may 4th 2023 the moon is going to look look like a full moon you will see it check it out and you'll see for yourself that's your sabbath right there and then at the seven days later seven days later the moon is going to look half again and then seven days later which is the 18th of may thursday 18th of may the moon is going to look uh, very tiny like one percent full very tiny that will be the last sabbath of this second month we are in the second month right now we are in the second month and by the way uh, the feast of the feast of tabernacle uh, or the feast of first fruit will be next month in the middle of the third month in the middle of the third month i'm going to make another video i'm going to produce another video about the upcoming feast of weeks it's coming up in the middle of the third month that will be next month so this is how it works that's how it works if you have any question you're more than welcome to give me a call sabbath is seven days from the new moon day sabbath is seven days from the new moon day so if the new moon day is on tuesday then the next sabbath will be the uh, will be at the upper tuesday and the moon is going to look about half that's how it works very simple easy to understand you might need a little time you know getting used to this you, you might need a, a little time but this is not complicated at all it's very easy to understand uh, please look into this watch the rest of the video i have a lot more scripture to show you i have historical account to show you in this video check it watch this video and rem remember that when you're done if you have any question i am waiting for your call i'll be looking forward to your call you can i'll be looking forward to your call 24 hours a day you can give me a call contact me anytime you can contact me directly or on whatsapp it's up, totally up to you how you want to contact me i'll be more than happy to talk to you and answer any question that you may have so all praises to our heavenly father let's slow down and go into this video i want to give you more information more historical information and more scripture on how to calculate this sabbath is seven days from the new moon day whenever you see the first crescent of the moon seven days after that is going to be your sabbath if you see the first crescent of the moon on wednesday then seven days after that is going to be your sabbath and the moon is going to look half uh, usually and then seven days after it's going to be your sabbath and the moon is going to look full so sabbath is not always on seven on saturday 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 no sabbath is based on the phases of the moon that's how our heavenly father established it so so all praises to our heavenly father let's get into this video and break it down i have a lot more information to show you and to give you in this video and when you're done watching the video if you have any question you're more than welcome to give me a call So let us go, go into how to calculate this calendar, how to identify the Sabbath day on God's calendar. The sun and the moon is God's calendar. The sun and the moon is the calendar that the Most High created when he created this world according to Genesis chapter 1 verse 14 to 16, Genesis 1 14 to 16, Psalm 104 verse 19, Psalm 104 verse 19. Sirach chapter 43 verse 6 to 8. If you don't have the book of Sirach, you can Google it. I suggest you Google it. If you Google it, you will see that the sun and the moon 
was meant to be the calendar, especially the moon. According to Sirach, chapter 43, verse 6 to 8. You can Google it with your phone and you read it, read it and see what it says. Also, the book of Jubilees. I highly recommend that you read the book of Jubilees, chapter 2, verse 8 and 9. Use your phone and Google it. Just type it into your phone and Google it and you'll see what it says. You know, these are things that Christians are hiding. So, the, 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 the moon is God's calendar. The moon is the calendar that the Most High created when he created this world. That's where the word the month came from. That word the month, month, is from the moon. Like when you say month, month. So, like when you say 25th, 26th, 27th. So, the moon is God's calendar. There's no doubt about that. There is no doubt. It's that we abandoned it and we began to use man made calendar. Even our Heavenly Father told us there was a prophecy that was given that we are going to abandon his calendar and follow a man made calendar. That's the book of Jubilees, chapter 1. You will be surprised if you read Jubilees, chapter 1. I really recommend that you use your phone and Google it. If you don't have the book of Jubilee, Google it and read it. You'll be highly surprised. You, you see what the Most High said there that we are going to abandon his calendar and that we are going to keep his keep the holy day in the wrong way we're going to observe his sabbath day the wrong way that's what we're doing today so let's go into how to calculate this calendar let's get into how to observe this calendar how to identify the sabbath day i want to show you how you yes you how you can identify the sabbath day it's very simple very very simple First thing you need to know is that new moon day begins the month. New moon day. New. Brand new moon day. When the first crescent of the moon comes out, that is a new moon day. So new moon day begins every month. And there's one new moon day every month. Like there's a new moon day every month. There is always a new moon day in every month. So new moon day begins the month. So you just have to find out when was the last new moon day or when is the next new moon day on the new moon day new moon day is when the first crescent of the moon comes out the day that the first crescent of the moon comes out is the new moon day in the evening of the new moon day the first crescent of the moon usually comes out in the evening of the new moon day and new moon days are worship days we are supposed to worship on the new moon day according to ezekiel 46 verse 1 to 3 ezekiel 46 verse 1 to 3 ezekiel 46 verse 1 to 3 we are supposed to worship on the new moon day so new moon day begins the month new moon day begins the month and today is a new moon day as as i've already said told you today is a new moon day and on the evening of the new moon day the first crescent of the moon will come out we are supposed to worship on the new moon day on the new moon day you're not supposed to go to work there is no walking on the new moon day you can cook on the new moon day you can cook on the new moon day you can celebrate the new moon feast but there's no buying or selling or going to work but you can cook on the new moon day if you have any question about new moon day you can call me as you can see my number on the screen feel free to contact me if you have any question so new moon day is a worship day and new moon day begins the month and typically the first crescent of the moon comes out in the evening of the new moon day the very first tiny crescent of the moon the small tiny crescent of the moon comes out in the evening of the new moon day after the sun goes down when the sun goes down after the sun goes down that's when the first tiny crescent of the moon comes out that is when you see the very first tiny crescent of the moon if you do not see it that evening that means that tomorrow the next day is also a new moon day so sometimes you have a one day new moon day the next month you have a two days new moon day if you look at first samuel chapter 20 first samuel chapter 20 if you read the whole chapter I really recommend that you read it. I suggest you read 1 Samuel chapter 20. When you read the whole chapter, you will see that David, Jonathan, Saul, the Israelites, you read there, they celebrated a two days new moon day. A two days new moon day. So on a new moon day, usually in the evening of the new moon day, the first crescent of the moon will come out. The first tiny crescent of the moon will come out in the evening of the new moon day. You blow your trumpet. You celebrate your new moon feast that day. The next day you go to work. The next day after the new moon day, you go to work. 
you walk for six days you rest on the seventh day if you remember the most High told us in the book of exodus chapter 9 chapter 16 from verse 16 to 30 exodus 16 16 to 30 the most High told us to walk for six days and rest on the seventh day so new moon day begins the month new moon day begins the month and on the new moon day we are supposed to worship our heavenly father we're supposed to have a holy convocation we are supposed to go to church on the new moon day according to ezekiel chapter 43 uh, 46 verse 1 to 3 ezekiel 46 verse 1 to 3 we go to we worship him on the new moon day then the next day we go to work we walk for six days and rest on the seventh day. So the day after the new moon day is the first work day of the week because there are three types of days. There are three types of days. You have new moon day and you have a Sabbath day. Uh, new moon day, work day and Sabbath day. New moon day, work days and Sabbath days. So new moon day begins the month and the first crescent of the moon will come out in the evening of the new moon day. And then the next day we go to work. First work day of the week second work day of the week third work day of the week fourth work day of the week fifth work day of the week sixth work day of the week and then the seventh day on the seventh day after the new moon day on the seventh day the moon is going to look half the moon will look half no matter where you are in the world it doesn't matter where you are in the world the moon is going to look half a half moon you observe the sabbath no matter where you are you observe the sabbath no buying on the sabbath no cooking on the sabbath no selling on the sabbath no going to work on the sabbath on the sabbath day you rest you rest you worship and rest if you have a church to worship with you can go and worship with them if you don't have anybody to worship with you can call me or send me a message and i will add you into our online con our congregation we have an online congregation where we worship together using our phone online if you don't have anybody to worship with stay in your house and look for an online congregation that you can join you can contact me and i will add you into our online congregation so on the sabbath day the moon will be half whether you are in japan you could be in japan you could be in in africa you could be in america you could be in any part of the world on the sabbath day the moon is going to be half you observe the sabbath you observe the sabbath day no buying, no cooking, no selling, no sex, not even sex. You can't even have sex on the Sabbath. Read the book of Jubilees chapter 50. Read the book of Jubilees chapter 50 to learn more on how to observe the Sabbath. Everything you need to know about observing the Sabbath, most of the information, how to observe the Sabbath is found in the book of Jubilees chapter 50. You can use your phone and Google it. Google it or ask somebody to Google it for you and show you the book of Jubilees chapter 50. Uh, you can also contact me. I will, now, I will send you the book, uh, the, the electronic version of the book of Jubilee. I can email it to you. So read the book of Jubilees chapter 50 to learn more on how to observe the Sabbath. So on the, Sabbath, on the first Sabbath of the month, seven days from the new moon day, the moon will be half. You observe the Sabbath because the Mosai told us to walk for six days and rest on the seventh day. He told us to walk for six days and rest on the seventh day, according to Exodus chapter 16 from verse 16. So the next day after the first Sabbath of the month, on the first Sabbath of the month, the moon will be half, a half moon. The moon will usually look half. Most of the time, the moon will look half on the first Sabbath of the month. You observe the Sabbath. The next day you go to work. First work day of the week. Second work day of the week. Third work day of the week fourth work day of the week fifth work day of the week sixth work day of the week and then the seventh day on the second sabbath of the month on the seventh day which is the second sabbath of the month second sabbath of the month the moon is going to be a full moon a big gigantic moon it doesn't matter where you are you could be in africa you could be in south africa you could be in north africa you could be in north america you could be in western europe it doesn't matter where you are in the world on the second sabbath of the month the moon is going to look full the moon is going to look like a full moon you observe your sabbath no buying no cooking no sex no selling no walking you rest on that day you worship on that day and you rest on the sabbath day and the moon is going to look half the next day you go to work first work day of the week second work day of the week third work day of the week fourth work day of the week fifth work day of the week sixth work day of the week and then the seventh day 
on the second sabbath of the month the moon is going to look uh, half again you're going to have a half moon you observe your sabbath on that sabbath day the moon will look half just by looking at the moon you can tell when the sabbath day is you observe the sabbath no buying no selling no cooking no sex read the book of jubilees chapter 50 to learn more on how to observe the sabbath and if you have any question feel free to contact me so you observe the sabbath on the sabbath day the moon will look half that is the third sabbath of the month the next day you go to work you work for six days you work for six days you rest on the seventh day because the Mosai told us to walk for six days and rest on the seventh day according to ezekiel uh according to exodus chapter 16 from verse 16 to 30. so the next day after this the third sabbath of the month after the third sabbath of the month the next day you go to work you walk for six days as you can see here you walk in all these days you walk for six days and then you rest on the seventh day on the last sabbath of the month on the last sabbath of the month the moon is going to look very tiny a small moon you may not even see it with your naked eyes you may not be able to see the moon with your naked eye on the last sabbath of the month the moon is going to be very tiny you observe the sabbath no buying no cooking no selling no sex you rest on the sabbath day the next day is automatically a new moon day the next day after the last sabbath of the month the next day after the last sabbath of the month is automatically a new moon day you observe your new moon you know that we're supposed to worship on the new moon new moon day is a worship day according to the book of ezekiel chapter 46 verse 1 to 3. ezekiel 46 verse 1 to 3 new moon day is a worship day you worship on the new moon day you know you can you can cook on the new moon because it's a feast day if you look at nehemiah chapter 8 verse 1 to 3 Nehemiah chapter 8 verse 1 to 3 you will see uh, verse 1 to 12 Nehemiah chapter 8 verse 1 to 12 you see how the how the Israelites observe the new moon day Nehemiah chapter 8 you know so this is very simple this is not complicated you know we're supposed to rest uh, on the Sabbath day we're supposed to worship on the Sabbath day and walk for six days and then you know worship at the next sabbath so this is how to count the how to count the uh, the biblical calendar it's not complicated it's very simple the new moon day begins the month no matter where you are in the world there will always be a new moon day new moon day begins the month and in the evening of the new moon day the first crescent of the moon will come out the first tiny crescent of the moon will come out on the on the evening of the new moon day the next day after the new moon day the next day after the first crescent of the moon came out so if the first crescent of the moon comes out today if the first crescent of the moon comes out today the next day is the first work day of the week the next day after the new moon day is the first work day of the week you go to work you work for six days and then you rest on the seventh day and typically the moon will look half the moon will, the moon will look half no matter where you are in the world on the sabbath day the moon will look half you observe the sabbath the next day you go to work you work for six days you rest on the seventh day and the moon will look full the moon is going to look full on the second sabbath of the month you observe your sabbath the next day you go to work you work for six days and then you rest on the seventh day and the moon will look half again the moon will look half again because on the second sabbath of the month the moon will look full a full moon on the second sabbath of the month on the third sabbath of the month the moon will look half so you walk for you walk for six days and then you rest on the sabbath day on the third sabbath of the month the moon will look half you observe your sabbath the next day you go to work you walk for six days you rest on the seventh day and the moon will look very tiny that is the last sabbath of the month this is very simple this is very basic it's not complicated at all you know you just have to find out when the new moon day is you can look online there are websites online that you can check out your website you can go to like moonsighting.com moonsighting.com is a very good website that, that tells you when the new moon day is going to be because people all over all over the world people more than 200 people more than 200 people in more than 50 countries more than 50 countries around the world there are people in these countries that go out on the new moon day to look for the moon and they report to that website moonsighting.com i recommend it you can go to moonsighting.com 
and the link will be under this video the link is in the under the video or you can just go to moonsighting.com they usually have information about the last new moon day or the next new moon day check it out and also the truth of yahweh there's a website called the truth of yahweh you can google new moon report if you google new moon report uh the first or the second link is called the truth of yahweh you touch that link and you go in there they have great information about new moon day about the upcoming new moon day and the past new moon day you can see on that website uh, truthofyahweh.com slash new moon you can just google new moon report and you click on truth of yahweh so, so that's a very great website these are great websites that can help you to identify when the new moon day is going to be and of course you can call me if you have any question you can call the number you see on your screen you give me a call if you have any question so this is how to count the sabbath this is how to count the sabbath we are going to slow down i'm going to slow down now so that we can go to the next level we can go to the next part of this video we're going to go into the next part about the historical historical and the other parts of this video that will give you more information uh, about this calendar the calendar of the most high if you have any question you are more than welcome to contact me so relax let us continue we're going to go into the the third part of this video the third part so i can give you more information i would like to give you more biblical information more historical information about your biblical about the calendar of the most high all praises to our heavenly father history history if you look at history you will see that in the past people were using the moon as their calendar the moon used to be the calendar that the world was using in the past when it, the israelites came out of egypt they were not using a man-made calendar think about it when the ancient israelites came out of egypt were they carrying a man-made calendar this is a man-made calendar this is a Gregorian calendar. It's a man-made calendar. This is not the calendar that the Most High created when he created this world. So you have to understand that when our Creator created this world, he also created a calendar. And that calendar is the sun and the moon. The sun and the moon is God's calendar according to scripture, according to Genesis chapter 1 verse 14 to 16. Genesis chapter 1 verse 14 to 16, the moon is God's calendar. The sun and the moon is God's calendar. The sun regulates the day. The moon regulates the month. That's why the phases of the moon changes every night. Saturday is not the Sabbath. Sunday is not the Sabbath. Saturday is not the Sabbath day and Sunday is not the Sabbath day. Because Saturday is the Sabbath day in man-made calendar. Saturday is the Sabbath day in the man-made calendar. If you want to keep the Sabbath day, you cannot use man-made calendar. You have to use God's calendar. And according to history, according to history, for example, look at the Chinese. The Chinese has been around for thousands of years. The Chinese have been around more than the Europeans. The Chinese have been around more than the Europeans that gave us this man-made calendar that we are using today. But the Chinese, for example, you see that you notice that their new year is not in January. The Chinese new year is not in January. The Chinese new year is, uh, is based on the moon. Google it. Type into your phone, Chinese new year. Chinese new year. You will see that the Chinese new year is not in January. They don't celebrate their new year in January. Their new year is based on the moon. The Chinese New Year is based on the moon. I really encourage you to look into this because I have already looked into it. And the Chinese don't celebrate their New Year in January 1st because the Chinese are using the moon as their calendar as the whole world used to do. If you look at the Islamic calendar, the Arabs, if you look at the Arabs who has been around for a long time, the Arabs has been around all the way till the time of Abraham. You will see that the Arabs are also using the moon as their calendar. 
the muslims do not use man-made calendar to observe their holy days they use the moon as their calendar google it and look into it yourself the muslims use the moon as their calendar even the russians the russians used to use the moon as their calendar most of the world if not all the world used to use the moon as their calendar until we abandon that natural calendar and we began to use the european calendar we began to use the catholic calendar a calendar that was made by pope gregory you know what let me show you this take a look at this video before we continue just watch this watch this and we'll come back and continue take a look at this and then we'll come back and continue so why do we celebrate January 1st as the new year? Why are half of our months named after numbers and the other after Roman religious practices and leaders? Have we always counted days, weeks, months, and years like this? What's with that Mayan calendar thing? There were a number of calendars in early human history. You had the Hebrew calendar, the Egyptian calendar, the Greek calendar, Chinese calendar, Babylonian calendar, and others. The one we use today in the Western world originated from the Roman calendar. Incidentally, the early Roman calendar evolved from that of the Greeks. It was basically a lunar calendar with an extra month inserted every so often to keep the months in step with the seasons. They were named Martius, Aprilis, Maya, Junius, Quintilis, Sextilis, September, October, November, December, Januarius, and Februarius. These names have pretty much been the same since the past 2500 years. Unlike today, the Roman year began with March. The calendar consisted of 355 days, which was about 12 lunar months. The intercalary month, Mercedonius, was added when needed at the end of February. So when that happened, February was shortened to 23 days. Julius Caesar took it upon himself to bring the calendar in line with the seasons. He ordered three intercalary months should be added at the end of the year, and rearranged the length of the months, giving them their present duration. He eventually rejected the lunar month entirely and adopted the solar year, which had an average length of 365.25 days. The four-year leap year cycle was added to resolve the 25th of a day. The reforms took place on January 1, 45 BCE. This changed the beginning of the year from March 1st to January 1st as we know it today. The calendar was called the Julian calendar for obvious reasons. The seven-day week was followed by Judaism and Islam. The week was set around a day of rest and religious practices. Romans didn't have a day of rest, so their eight-day week cycled around market days. Eventually, astrologers assigned a planet to rule each of the 24 hours of the day in a continual sequence. This led to the Roman seven-day cycle. Saturn, the Sun, Moon, Mars, Mercury, Jupiter, and Venus became Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. The names of the first six months are partially derived through the fact that certain Roman gods had feast days or time centered around them. For example, Janus was the god of beginning, so January was used for the name of the first month of the year. The month of March was the time that soldiers would begin war, so it was named after the god of war, Mars. The other two months were named after Roman leaders, and the rest of the months were just named after the number of the month that they were. October, 8th month, November, 9th month. The Julian calendar was simple, which made everything seem fine and dandy, but there was a small problem, a problem that added up every year. The 365.25 day year is 11 minutes and 15 seconds longer than the true length of the tropical year. After 128 years, the season begins a whole day earlier. The Egyptians, Greeks, and Romans didn't have an issue with days not lining up perfectly, but the Christian church did. You see, they wanted to make sure that the religious holidays they celebrated were on their actual days. Pope Gregory XIII took it upon himself to resolve this problem and came up with the Gregorian calendar. The changes he enacted resolved the shift at the beginning of each year, set a standard for the length of a year in days and minutes and seconds, among other things. The changes were not accepted in England and the British colonies in America until 1752. By then, the English calendar was off by 11 days compared to the calendar of continental Europe. Because of this, dates of events such as the timeline of historical figures will often have two dates. The Gregorian is called the New Style and the Julian the Old Style. The birth of Isaac Newton was the 25th of December, 1642, in accordance to the Old Style, but was the 4th of January, 1643, in accordance to the New Style. In the Middle Ages, New Year's celebrations were abolished due to their pagan origins, but the celebrations were started again in 1582. The modern calendar can't be credited to one specific person. It's pretty much the Gregorian calendar, but with an addition of dates for Christian celebrations and the way years are numbered. Oh, and about the 2012 Mayan prophecy stating the end of the world, don't worry about that, it's a bunch of bunk. So, as you saw in the, in the, in the video, um, there are different types of calendar. There are different types of calendar in the world. And today, we are using a man-made calendar. Today, the world is using a Gregorian calendar made and named after this man. His name is Pope Gregory. Pope Gregory, a Roman Catholic Pope, he was the one that made this calendar in 1582 AD. 1582 AD. Look into it. Google Gregorian calendar 
I want you to study about the Gregorian calendar and you will see that this is a man-made calendar. This is not the calendar that the Most High created for us to use. The Most High created the sun and the moon. The sun and the moon is God's calendar. We are supposed to use the sun and the moon as our calendar. The sun regulates the day and the moon regulates the month. The sun regulates the day and the moon regulates the month. We're supposed to use the moon as our calendar. If you look at history, historical evidence, you will see that the Most High God created the sun and the moon to be the calendar. You know, so if you look at scripture, you look at scripture, you will see that the Israelites used to use the moon as their calendar. For example, if you look at Colossians chapter 2, Colossians chapter 2, you see Paul. Paul the Apostle in Colossians chapter 2, you see Paul telling the, the followers of Christ, the believers, the followers of Christ in Colossians chapter 2 verse 1 to 16. Colossians chapter 2 verse 1 to 16, you see Paul telling them not to allow anybody to judge them or to condemn them when they observe the Sabbath day, the new moon day and the feast day. Colossians chapter 2. The book of Colossians chapter 2 verse 1 to 16. You see Paul encouraging the early followers of Christ not to let anybody condemn them or judge them when they observe the Sabbath day, the feast days, and the new moon days. You cannot observe the new moon day with the man-made calendar. It is impossible to observe new moon day with this calendar. This is a pagan calendar. This is a man-made calendar. This is an European calendar. This is a Catholic calendar. This is a satanic calendar. You can't use this calendar to observe holy day. This is not God's calendar. God's calendar is the moon. The moon is the calendar that the most high God gave us. So uh, when we are commanded to worship on the new moon day, there's no new moon day in this calendar. There is no new moon day in man-made calendar. Man-made calendar does not recognize the new moon day. But in God's calendar, you see a new moon day. New moon day is when the month begins. New moon day is when the first crescent of the moon comes out. The first tiny crescent of the moon comes out on the evening of the new moon day. On the evening of the new moon day, that's when the first tiny crescent of the moon comes out. Then you observe the new moon day. We are supposed to worship on the new moon day according to Ezekiel 46 verse 1 to 3. Ezekiel 46 verse 1 to 3 was supposed to worship on the new moon day. Then the next day after the new moon day, the next day after the new moon day, we now go to work. We work for six days. We rest on the seventh day. And usually on the seventh day, the moon will look half, a half moon. On the seventh day, you observe your Sabbath. No buying, no cooking, no selling. You observe your Sabbath. The next day, you go to work. You work for six days. You rest on the seventh day. On the second Sabbath of the month, the moon is going to look full. A full moon. You observe your Sabbath. The next day, you go to work. You work for six days. You rest on the seventh day. And the moon will be half. It's really that simple. It's not complicated. If you look at history, historical evidence, shows that the moon is god's calendar if you look at biblical evidence biblical evidence you see that the, the most high god created the sun and the moon to be the calendar genesis chapter 1 verse 14 to 16 psalm 104 verse 19 sirach 43 verse 6 to 8 and different other scriptures you see that the israelite was using the moon as their calendar so historical evidence shows that the moon is God's calendar. This is the reason why when you look at these ancient people, like the Chinese, the Chinese has been around for thousands of years and they use the moon till today. The Chinese are using the moon till date, till today as their calendar. The moon is what they use as their calendar. Even the Arabs are using the moon as their calendar. This is the reason why the phases of the moon changes every night. Every night, this is not a coincidence because the moon is God's calendar and historical evidence shows that. Historical evidence proves that. If you look at biblical evidence, if you look at scriptures, if you read all the scriptures, you read all the scriptures, you will see that our ancestors, the Israelites, was using the moon as their calendar. The Israelites used the moon as their calendar. The ancient Israelite was using the moon as their calendar. They did not use a man-made calendar. Saturday is not the Sabbath. Saturday is not the Sabbath day.
Sunday is not the Sabbath day. Biblical evidence shows that the moon is God's calendar. Biblical scriptures, scriptures shows that the moon is God's calendar. And if you're being honest, if I'm being honest, I have to use the moon as my calendar. You have to use the moon as your calendar. We're supposed to use the moon to keep the Sabbath. All praises to our Heavenly Father. I thank the Messiah for his love and his kindness. And that is the historical aspect of this video. According to history, the moon is God's calendar. Historical evidence proved that the moon is God's calendar. That's a fact. So we're going to go into the next part of this video. If you have any question, my number is on the screen. You can call me if you have any question. Saturday is not the Sabbath. Sunday is not the Sabbath. If you want to keep the Sabbath, you have to use the moon and keep the Sabbath according to the moon. You can learn it. It's not complicated. It's not difficult. If you have any question, you are more than welcome to contact me. Dawn to dawn. Did you know that the day begins from dawn to dawn? The day begins from morning to morning, dawn to dawn, not evening to evening. There is a big lie, the idea that the day begins from evening to evening. When the sun goes down, that's when the, the day begins. That is a lie. The idea that the day begins in the evening is a lie. It's not biblical that is not biblical according to the bible the day begins from dawn till the next dawn morning to morning morning to the next morning dawn to dawn not evening to evening now now let me give you biblical evidence that the day begins from dawn to dawn the day begins from morning to morning not evening to evening according to the bible if you look at Exodus chapter chapter 19 verse 10 to 16 Exodus chapter 19 verse 10 to 16 you will see that when our heavenly father wanted to meet the Israelite his people when our creator wanted to meet with his people he told them to get ready that he will meet them on the third day that he was going to meet them on the third day on that third day he met them at dawn in the morning they went there in the morning not in the evening but at dawn dawn is that period of time in the morning when the daylight begins to appear when daylight begins to appear in the morning you know at night in, at night you have darkness in the sky there is darkness all over the sky but at some point in the early morning, the early morning, daylight will begin to appear in the east. That is called dawn. That is when the day begins. So if you look at Exodus chapter 19, verse 10 to 16, you see that when the Most High, our Creator God, wanted to meet the, with the Israelite, the Bible said that they went there on the third day at dawn. That is the first evidence. If you look at Joshua chapter 6, verse 1 to 15 joshua chapter 6 verse 1 to 15 you will see that when the most high god our heavenly father told the israelite his people to go and march around the wall of jericho he told them to march around the wall of jericho for seven days if you look at historical ev the biblical evidence in the book of joshua chapter 6 you will see that the israelite marched around the wall of jericho for seven days on the seventh day joshua chapter 6 15 joshua chapter 6 verse 15 on the seventh day they went there at dawn early in the morning at dawn on the seventh day that they were supposed to march around the wall of jericho they were commanded to march around the wall of jericho the israelite went there at dawn not in the evening not at 12 midnight the day does not begin at 12 midnight and the day does not begin in the evening when the sun goes down that is not biblical i just gave you the second evidence in joshua chapter 6 verse 1 to 15 the ancient israelite marched around the wall of jericho 
on the seventh day at dawn in the morning dawn is when the day begins it's very early in the morning when daylight begins to appear in the east let me give you some more evidence if you look at matthew chapter 28 from verse 1 matthew chapter 28 from verse 1 you will see that there were a couple of women there were some women that wanted to go to the tomb where christ was buried or where christ the christ's body where they laid the body of christ these women wanted to go there to anoint his body with spices but they couldn't go because that was the sabbath day because that day was the sabbath day they could not go they had to wait until after the sabbath if you look at matthew 28 you will see that after the sabbath as he began to dawn towards the first day of the week that was when they went there please read these scriptures look at these scriptures i'm giving you the third evidence the third biblical evidence matthew 28 from verse 1 you see that these women went to the place where they laid the body of christ they they, they went there at dawn as it was dawning towards the first day of the week the day begins from dawn to dawn not evening to evening not 12 midnight to 12 midnight no no that is not biblical that is an european ideology the idea that the day begins from morning uh, from evening to evening is an european ideology it's not biblical the idea that the day begins from 12 midnight to 12 midnight that's an european ideology it's not biblical people are misunderstanding leviticus chapter 23 in leviticus chapter 23 it tells you that you are supposed to observe the day of atonement from the evening of the ninth to the evening of the tenth leviticus chapter 23 says that we're supposed to observe the day of atonement from evening of the ninth to the evening of the tenth so now people take that and they apply it to every sabbath that is dumb that is stupid that is foolishness that is foolishness to take something that the Mosai told you to do here and then take it from here and apply it to everywhere take what he told you to do how to observe the day of atonement you now take that to apply to every other sabbath there are different types of sabbath feast of unleavened bread is a sabbath feast of tabernacle is a sabbath passover is pretty much like a sabbath so uh day of atonement is a sabbath so the most high told us to observe the day of atonement from the evening of the ninth to the evening of the tenth you cannot take that and apply it to the weekly sabbath the day begins from dawn to dawn morning to morning so for all these days for all the days that the sabbath is going to be on this this month for all the days that the sabbath is going to be on this the day will begin from dawn to the next dawn from from morning to the next morning so if the sabbath is on wednesday then the, then the day the day that sabbath will begin from wednesday morning to thursday morning if the sabbath is on friday then that sabbath will begin from friday morning to saturday morning if the sabbath is on monday then that sabbath will begin from monday morning to tuesday morning the day begins from dawn to the next dawn dawn to dawn there are other scriptures there are other places in the bible that i did not even mention there are other places in the bible that i did not even mention about when the day begins i have a video i have a special video that i made about when the day begins it's called the day begins from dawn to dawn if you look on youtube the day begins from dawn to dawn or you can look under this video look under this video or look at my website look at my website or under this video or you can contact me uh, check my youtube channel you will see the link to the you see that video or look under this video at the description of this video if you click under this video on the description you will see a link to watch the full video a special video i made a few years ago about when the day begins you will see a lot more scripture according to the bible the day begins from dawn to dawn not evening to evening no that's not when the day begins not 12 midnight to 12 midnight no that's not when the day begins the day begins from dawn to dawn from morning to the next morning dawn to dawn if you look at genesis because i know that some people might mention genesis chapter one what about genesis chapter one yes genesis chapter one what was the first thing that the most High created light if you look at genesis chapter one the most High created light he said let there be light and there was light right according to genesis chapter one god our creator yahweh the most high god 
he said let there be light and there was light he separated the light from the darkness he called the light day and he called the darkness night so the first thing that the most high created was light light and that light he called day and the darkness he called night so the first thing the most high created was day not evening not night the first thing that the most high created in the six day creation in that six day creation according to genesis chapter one within the six day creation if you're being honest look at your bible your bible tells you that the first thing the most high created was light and he called that light day the day begins from dawn from light dawn to dawn not evening to evening not 12 midnight to 12 midnight according to genesis chapter 1 he created day first day was the first thing he created day comes before night the day begins before night day comes before night not evening to evening not 12 midnight to 12 midnight genesis chapter 1 shows you that the first thing the most high created was day light he created light he said let there be light and there was light and he separated the light from the darkness he called the light day so day was the first thing that came day was the first thing that the most high created day is what begins the day not night not evening not 12 midnight day begins the day after day comes night and then you have a full day you have evening you have day and night that gives you a 24 hour period a day does not end in the evening a day does not end at 12 midnight a day ends at the next morning the day begins from dawn to dawn morning to morning if you have any question about this feel free to contact me feel free to call me feel free to whatsapp me feel free to email me uh if you have any question so for all these days that sabbath is going to be on the day is going to begin from dawn to dawn we observe sabbath from morning to morning we observe sabbath from this morning to the next morning from this morning to the next morning the day begins from this morning to the next morning the day is not going to end by 12 midnight tonight today is not going to end in the evening today no the day ends at the next morning the day is from morning to the next morning the day comes light comes daylight begins the day and then followed by evening by night and then followed by the followed by the next morning the day is from dawn to dawn not evening to evening not 12 midnight to 12 midnight if you have any question you are more than welcome to contact me there are different other scriptures that i did not even mention that has to deal with this the day does not begin in the in the evening or 12 midnight if you want to observe biblical sabbath you have to observe the sabbath from dawn to dawn and saturday is not the sabbath sunday is not the sabbath saturday is not the sabbath day and sunday is not the sabbath day because the most high god created the sun and the moon to be his calendar if you are going to church on saturday you're going to church on the wrong day if you are going to church on sunday you're going to church on the wrong day saturday is not the sabbath sunday is not the sabbath if you're going to keep the sabbath you have to use the moon the moon is the calendar that the most high god created the moon is god's calendar and you have to use it to keep the sabbath it's really that simple if you have any question you are more than welcome to contact me all praises to our heavenly father Did you know that the Most High predicted, our Creator predicted the rejection of His calendar? The Most High told us even before it happened. In the book of Daniel chapter 7, Daniel chapter 7, 21, 23 to 25. Daniel 7, 23 to 25. The Most High made, He made prophet Daniel to prophesy how his calendar will be changed the most high god knew ahead of time that man will try to change his calendar 
and there was a prophecy that predicted the changing of the calendar i encourage you to read daniel chapter 7 23 to 25 and you will see for yourself check it out read daniel chapter 7 verse 23 to 25 and you will see that it was prophesied that the beast will think to change the times and the laws you would think to change the sacred festivals the sacred festivals and that was exactly what happened it predicted that man the europeans the beast the beast according to daniel chapter 7 say that the beast will think to change the sacred festivals and the laws regarding the sacred festivals that's what happened that's how they ended up creating this fake man-made calendar this european catholic current calendar this satanic calendar that was created by pope a roman catholic pope pope gregory created this useless calendar this nonsense calendar this satanic calendar that has been used to replace god's calendar god's calendar is the moon the moon is god's calendar our creator created this world and also created the sun and the moon to be his calendar anybody who is being honest and you want to observe holy days you have to use god's calendar you cannot use a man-made calendar to observe a holy day you cannot use an unholy calendar to observe a holy day you cannot use a catholic calendar a pagan calendar an european calendar a satanic calendar to observe holy day like the passover the sabbath day new moon day no you have to use god's calendar because our creator also created a calendar when he created this world and that calendar is the moon the sun and the moon saturday is not the sabbath day sunday is not the sabbath day saturday is not the sabbath day sunday is not the sabbath day if you are going to church on saturday you are wasting your time you are going to church at the wrong day if you're going to church on sunday you are wasting your time you're going to church on the wrong day because saturday is the seventh day in the man-made calendar let me repeat that again saturday is the seventh day in the man-made calendar our creator has a calendar our creator made a calendar and his calendar is the moon the moon is god's calendar according to genesis chapter 1 verse 14 to 16 genesis 1 14 to 16 psalm 104 verse 19 Sirach 43 verse 6 to 8 Sirach 43 verse 6 to 8 you can google the book of Sirach. google it and read it and you see for yourself so the moon is god's calendar and the most high god told us ahead of time even the book of jubilees chapter 2 the book of jubilees chapter 2 if you google it and you will see that the most high made the moon and the sun to be his calendar so our heavenly father knew ahead of time that people will try to change his calendar people will try to reject his calendar so if you look at jubilees chapter one i want to point you uh, point you to jubilees chapter one i want to direct your attention to jubilees chapter one if you don't have the book of jubilee google it if you don't know how to google it tell your grandchild or your grandson or tell anybody who is around to help you and get you the book of jubilee on their phone let them google the book of jubilee jubilees chapter one jubilees chapter one jubilees chapter one let them google it and show it to you and if you look at chapter one and you read it you see that the most high talked about he predicted the most high god our creator yahweh our creator told the ancient israelite he told moses how his people the israelites will reject the the sabbath days and how they will begin to observe the holy days how they will begin to observe it according to the other nations how they will observe it like the other nations basically how they are going to reject his calendar how they are going to not observe the commandment the way he commanded them how they are going to not observe the sabbath day the way he commanded them these things are found in the book of jubilees that's what's happening today so today the israelites don't know don't even know who they are the israelites have forgotten who they are the prophecy in jeremiah 17 verse 4 has come to pass jeremiah 17 verse 4 say that the israelites will discontinue from their heritage the ancient israelites will discontinue from their heritage and they will serve their enemy in a land that they do not know jeremiah 17 4 
Jeremiah 17 4 talked about how the Israelites will discontinue from their heritage, how they are going to discontinue from the things that the Most High gave them, and they are going to forget who they are. They are going to dis discontinue from their heritage, their identity, their law, their language, their way of life. They are going to discontinue from that and they are going to serve their enemy in a land that they do not know. Today, the real Israelites have no idea who they are. The real Israelites don't know who they are. They don't even know that they are the Israelites. Those people that you see in Jerusalem, the so-called Jews, they are not the real Jews. The so-called Jews are not the real Jews. They are fake Jews. Revelation chapter 2 talked about the fake Jews. Revelation chapter 2 verse 9. Revelation chapter 2 verse 9 and also Revelation chapter 3 verse 9. Revelation chapter 3 verse 9 also talked about the fake Jews, those who are claiming to be Jews, those in the synagogue of Satan, those who pretend and claim to be Jews even though they are not. According to Jeremiah chapter 17 verse 4, Jeremiah 17 verse 4, the real Israelites will discontinue from their heritage and they will be scattered around the world. They will serve their enemies in a land that they do not know. So the so-called black people in America, they are the real Jews. The so-called African Americans, the so-called black people in America, they are the real Jews. But they don't even realize that because Jeremiah 17 verse 4 has now been fulfilled. According to the Bible, the ancient Israelites will forget who they are. They will discontinue from their heritage and they will serve their enemy in a land that they do not know. This is the reason why the real Israelite, the real Israelite has been scattered around the world. Those in Jamaica, those in Trinidad, those in Jamaica, Belize, Haiti, Trinidad, those in the Caribbean, these are Israelites. They have no idea that they are the Israelites. Those so-called black people in America, they have no idea that they are the Israelites. That's why they're going through the things that they're going through. The brutality, the racism, and the brutality they are going through in America. That's why it's happening. Because of the anger of the Most High. Because of our lawlessness. Because we abandoned the law. And the Most High abandoned us. Just like he said in Jubilees chapter 1. In the book of Jubilees chapter 1, he said that he will abandon us. Just like we abandoned his law. He will abandon us. That's exactly what's happening today. So those in Western Africa... The so-called Igbos, the Igbos, the so-called Igbos in the place known as Nigeria. They are also the Israelite. The Israelite has been scattered around the world and today they are suffering. They are being ruled over by their enemy. If you look at the Igbos, the Igbos are fighting for their independence. The Igbos are fighting the Nigerian government. The Igbos are fighting the Nigerian government and fighting for their independence. Wherever the Israelites are, they are struggling. They are protesting. They are marching. They are looking for independence, but they are looking for independence the wrong way. The only way to get your independence is to keep the law. The only way to get your heritage is to keep the law. The only way to get your identity is to keep the law. You cannot protest your way into freedom. You cannot march your way into freedom. You cannot vote your way into freedom. The Most High God is the one that kept us in this situation. The Most High God is the one that raised our enemy to rule over us, to educate us, to teach us, to teach us all this rubbish they have taught us. The Most High is the one that raised the Europeans against us. Yes, let me say that again. The Most High God is the one that raised the Europeans against us. Just like he lay, raised the Philistines against us. Just like he raised the Philistines against our ancestors, the Israelites. Just like he raised the Assyrians against our ancestors, the Israelites. Just like he raised the Babylonians against our ancestors, the Israelites. Just like he raised the Greeks around, uh, against us, uh, against us. Uh, the ancient Israelite. The same way the Most High have raised the Europeans against us. That's why they oppress us. That's why they rule over us. That's a fact. That's why you see what's going on in America, what's going on in Nigeria, what's going on in Jamaica and all over the world. We are suffering. We are at the bottom because we have abandoned God's law and God has abandoned us. He talked about how we, we, are going to abandon his sabbath how we're going to abandon his law and he is going to abandon us also into the hands of our enemy the hands of our enemy the europeans are our enemy and the most High have put up put, put us under them and they're ruling over us those people you see in jerusalem are not the real jews they are not the real jews they are the fake jews and luke chapter 21 in luke chapter 21 christ talked about how how the the gentiles will be in the holy land Luke chapter 21, 
Christ talked about how the Gentiles are going to be in the Holy Land, how they're going to trample on the Holy Land, and the real Jews will be scattered around the world. Luke 21, Christ talked about how the real Jews, the, how the real Israelites will be kicked out of their land and scattered around the world. And then the Gentiles will stay in the Holy Land and tremble on that land until the times of the Gentiles is fulfilled. Until the times of the Gentiles is fulfilled. That's what's happening today. So today the real Israelites don't know who they are. Today they are keeping Sabbath on Saturday. Saturday is not the Sabbath. Saturday is not the Sabbath day. Sunday is not the Sabbath day. Saturday is not the Sabbath day. Sunday is not the Sabbath day. If you want to keep the Sabbath, you have to use the moon to keep the Sabbath. And the Most High talked about how we are going to forget the Sabbath. How we are going to discontinue from the Sabbath. How we are going to serve our enemy in a land that we do not know. That's exactly what's happening today. That's what's going on today. And today we have forgotten the Sabbath. The Sabbath has been forgotten. If you look at Limitation chapter 2, Limitation chapter 2 and Hosea chapter 2, these places talked about how the Sabbath will be forgotten. Uh, Jubilees chapter 2 also, chapter 1. Jubilees chapter 1. If you read it, you will see. The Most High predicted, the Most High told Moses, our God told Moses that the Israelites will forget his Sabbath day and begin to observe it according to the other nation. That we are going to abandon it and observe the Sabbath like the other nations, which is the wrong way. That's exactly what's happening today. So Saturday is not the Sabbath. Sunday is not the Sabbath. And the real Israelites don't know who they are. The real Israelites have forgotten the Sabbath. And today, the real Israelites are observing the Sabbath like the Gentiles. We are observing the Sabbath like the heathen on Saturday. We are using the, the, the pagan calendar of the Europeans. The calendar of the Europeans are pagan calendar. The Gregorian calendar that they gave us we're using today to keep Sabbath on Saturday is a pagan calendar. Saturday is not the Sabbath. We, the Israelites, have to wake up to our identity. We have to wake up and go back to God's law. Today, we don't know that we are the Israelites. The so-called black people in America don't know that they are the Israelites. Those in Jamaica don't know that they are the Israelites. Those in Haiti, Trinidad, Belize, Panama, these people, all of us, those in West Africa, the so-called Igbos, the so-called Ashantis in Ghana. We are scattered all over the world and we're suffering under, the, under our enemies because we, the Israelite, has abandoned God's law and God has abandoned us also into the hands of our enemy. And today we're struggling, we're suffering and we're dying and wasting away without knowing who we are. It's time for us to wake up and go back to God's law. It's time for us to wake up and keep his law the way he commanded us. Saturday is not the Sabbath. Sunday is not the Sabbath. We have to stop keeping the Sabbath according to our enemies. Saturday is something that came from our enemy, the Europeans. We, Sunday is also something that came from them. It's time for us to go back and use the moon to keep the Sabbath. The moon is something that the Most High created. God created the moon. The Europeans did not create the moon. Our enemies did not create the moon. We have to keep the Sabbath according to the moon. The moon regulates as God's calendar. Saturday is not the Sabbath. We have to observe the new moon day. We have to walk for six days and rest on the seventh day. And on the seventh day, the moon is going to be half. On Sabbath day, the moon will look half. On second Sabbath of the moon, the moon will look full. It's really simple. Look into this. If you have any question, feel free to contact me. All praises to our Heavenly Father. The truth is that God's calendar is the moon. If you look at the biblical evidence, if you look at the scriptures, you look at Genesis chapter 1 verse 14 to 16, Psalm 104 verse 19, Sirach 43 verse 6 to 8, the book of Enoch 77 14. If you look at these scriptures, and by the way, you can Google the book of Sirach. Type it into your phone and read it. If you look at these scriptures, the fact is that God's calendar is the moon. The moon is God's calendar. And if we are going to keep the Sabbath, we have to use the moon. Saturday is not the Sabbath. 
sunday is not the sabbath day and saturday is not the sabbath day saturday is the seventh day in my made calendar saturday saturday is the seventh day in my made calendar you cannot observe a holy day with an unholy calendar the calendar that the world is using today is a pagan calendar it's an european calendar it's a catholic calendar because it was made by a roman catholic pope that's a fact this calendar was made by a, a, a roman catholic pope pope gregory so you cannot use this calendar to keep the sabbath you have to use the moon the sabbath is regulated by the moon new moon day begins the month new moon day begins the month and new moon day is the worship day we are supposed to worship on the new moon day according to ezekiel 46 verse 1 to 3 ezekiel 46 verse 1 to 3 we are supposed to worship on the new moon day so you worship on the new moon day the next day you go to work you work for six days and then you rest on the seventh day it's really that simple you work for six days and rest on the seventh day and on the seventh day the moon will look half on the seventh day the moon is going to look half you observe your sabbath the next day you go to work you work for six days you you rest on the seventh day on the second sabbath of the month the moon will look full a full moon no matter where you are in the world doesn't matter where you are the moon is going to look full on the second sabbath of the month you observe your sabbath the next day you go to work you work for six days you rest on the seventh day it's really that simple god's calendar is very simple god's calendar is very very easy to understand it's in the sky where nobody can touch it where nobody can step their foot you know like the americans who lied americans lied and claimed that they went to the moon they did not go to any moon the americans did not go to the moon the most high god our creator will never allow the americans to step their filthy feet on the moon our heavenly father will never allow the gentiles to step their filthy disgusting foot on the moon nobody went to the moon and nobody will ever go to the moon don't believe that nonsense they went to the moon in the 1960 how come they haven't gone back to the moon since 1960 because they're a bunch of liars the moon is god's calendar and he put it in the sky where everybody can see it whether you are in japan whether you are in africa whether you are in america it doesn't matter where you are you will be able to look at the moon and know when the sabbath day is the problem is that when you begin to look into this when you begin to study this if you look into this calendar if you begin to study this you are going to begin to see videos on youtube you are going to see videos speaking against god's calendar you are going to see preachers who are preaching against against god god's calendar you're going to see preachers that will tell you that saturday has always been the sabbath that the sabbath never changed that saturday is the sabbath that is not true saturday is not the sabbath saturday is the seventh day a man-made calendar you cannot use man-made calendar to observe a holy day like the sabbath if you want to observe sabbath day or feast day you have to use the moon that is the reason why we observe the passover on the 14th of the moon do you use the man-made calendar to observe the passover no you don't observe passover on the on the 14th of january do you do you observe passover on the 14th of january we're not supposed to do that we use the moon to observe the feast days and we're supposed to use the moon to observe the sabbath it's that simple when you when you begin to look into this you are going to see preachers online that will be telling you that saturday is the sabbath and sabbath never change saturday has always been the sabbath and the sabbath never change and the sabbath never change saturday is the sabbath saturday is that's what you're going to be hearing from these preachers they are liars these preachers are liars people like pastor dal this man right here he is one of the people that preach that saturday is the sabbath people like pastor dal he is a liar these preachers are lying because of money they are claiming that saturday is the sabbath no saturday is not the sabbath day sunday is not the sabbath day either 
sunday is not a worship day saturday is not a worship day because our creator gave us a calendar when he created this world so pastor dal is a liar then you have the iuic those people are at iuic those hebrew israelite camps they are claiming that saturday is the sabbath saturday is not the sabbath day they are lying they're doing this because of money they don't want to lose their members they know that if they accept that the moon is god's calendar if they accept that the moon regulates the sabbath they will have to start keeping sabbath use according to the moon they know that these preachers understand that if they start keeping sabbath according to the moon they will lose their member this is all about money people like uh, uh, like michael rood michael rood people like the seventh day adventist church the seventh day adventist they promote that saturday is the sabbath saturday is not the sabbath people like 119 ministry the so-called 119 ministry these are false preachers wicked men who are rejecting god's calendar because of money because they don't want to lose their members these people are disgusting these men are evil wicked preachers rejecting god's calendar and then they will tell you oh the sabbath never changed saturday has always been the sabbath that's a lie that is a lie because if you look at limitation, limitation chapter 2 limitations chapter 2 i would like you to pause this this video and read it if you look at limitations chapter 2 you will see that the most high talked about how his people will how the sabbath will be forgotten limitations chapter 2 the most high will make the israelite to re, to forget the sabbath limitations chapter 2 has a prophecy that talked about how the sabbath will be forgotten and that prophecy has came to pass that prophecy has already came to pass the sabbath has been forgotten and we are keeping the sabbath according to the gentiles according to the europeans lamentations chapter 2 verse 1 to 6 read it for and see for yourself also hosea chapter 2 hosea chapter 2 verse 11 hosea chapter 2 verse 11 shows that the sabbath was lost Hosea chapter 2 verse 11. These two places, Lamentations chapter 2 and also Hosea chapter 2 shows that the Sabbath was lost. And Daniel chapter 7 talked about how the beast will change the Sabbath. How the beast will change the calendar. All these prophecies have come to pass already. So the Sabbath was lost even in the book of Jubilees chapter 1. I highly recommend it. If you don't have the book of Jubilee, use your phone and Google it and you will see for yourself. Jubilees chapter 1. Jubilees chapter 1 talked about how the Israelites will abandon the feast days and the Sabbath days and they will observe it according to the Gentiles. They will observe these holy days like the Gentiles. That's what's happening today. So these wicked preachers, people like Pastor Dal, those in iuic the hebrew israelite camps and the seven day adventist and the 119 ministry all these preachers who are telling you that saturday is the sabbath they are lying they are rejecting god's calendar shame on these preachers who are lying and rejecting god's calendar because of money it's all about money because they don't want to lose their members they don't want to lose their members in their congregation they know that if they believe and they accept and they promote the moon as God's calendar. Some of their members will stop coming. Their members who are not serious in worshiping God will stop coming. Because it's far easier to keep Sabbath on Saturday than it is to keep it using the moon. Because when you keep the Sabbath according to the moon, when you keep the Sabbath, when you keep the Sabbath according to the moon, the Sabbath could be on Monday or Tuesday or Thursday or Friday. Because the God's calendar is different from man-made calendar. So these preachers are lying. And they will tell you that, oh, the Sabbath never, was never changed. The Sabbath has always been on Saturday from creation. The Sabbath has always been on Saturday from creation. They are lying. These people are lying. The Israelites did not keep Sabbath using the, the, the man-made calendar. The Israelites kept the Sabbath using the moon. The moon is God's calendar. So stop listening to these preachers. Look at the evidence. Look at Genesis chapter 1 verse 14 to 16 and you will see for yourself. 
Genesis 114 to 16, Psalm 104, verse 19, Sirach 40, 43, verse 6 to 8. Read these scriptures that you will see for yourself. Read these scriptures. Study this. Don't listen to these fake preachers, these false preachers who are lying and rejecting God's calendar because of money. Because they know that if they accept the truth that Saturday is not the Sabbath and Sunday is not the Sabbath, if they accept that truth, that means that they will lose some of their members who may not be able to come to Sabbath on Thursday or on Tuesday or on Monday. Because God's Sabbath, God's Sabbath is not on Saturday, 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 Saturday. No. Saturday is not always the Sabbath and Sunday is not always the Sabbath. If you want to observe the Sabbath, you have to use the moon. And shame on these preachers. Shame on, shame on all these preachers who are lying and claiming that Sabbath was never lost. Sabbath was never changed. The Sabbath was never changed and Sabbath was never lost. That's not true. The Most High said that Sabbath will be lost. And it was lost according to limitation chapter 2 verse 1 to 6 and hosea chapter 2 verse 11 and other scriptures like jubilees chapter 1 so stop listening to these preachers if you want to keep the sabbath you have to use the moon all praises to our heavenly father if you have any question you are more than welcome to contact me saturday is not the sabbath sunday is not the sabbath if you want to keep the sabbath you have to use the moon the moon is god's calendar the moon is god's calendar and you have to use it to keep the sabbath if you're being honest if you have any question you are more than welcome to contact me saturday is not the sabbath sunday is not the sabbath these preachers are lying they are lying stop listening to them read your bible and keep the sabbath using the moon use the moon to keep the sabbath you have any question feel free to contact me all praises to our heavenly father So, as we come to the conclusion of this video, if you have any question, you are more than welcome to contact me. You see, I am not giving you this information and then abandon you. My intention is not to give you this information and then turn my, backs on, on my back on you. No, I am going to be here. If you have any question, call me. You can call me. You can email me you can send me a test message you can call me on skype i prefer you call me on uh, on whatsapp you can call me on whatsapp you can take my number and save on your phone save my number on your phone and then look for me on whatsapp find me on whatsapp and call me if you have any question you can also test send me a message on whatsapp you can also email me. You are more than welcome to send me an email. Send me an email if you have any question. You are more than welcome to contact me on Skype. There are different ways you can contact me. You can check out my website, lostgodskingdom.com. Uh, you can check out my website, check out my Skype. You can find me on, on YouTube, on Skype. or There are different ways you can contact me. I prefer you contact me on WhatsApp. WhatsApp is the best way to contact me. So you save this number on your phone and reach me through WhatsApp. If you don't have a WhatsApp, if you don't use WhatsApp, that's fine. Call me. Use this number and give me a call. Or send me a text message. Or send me an email. You can email me also. So you are more than welcome to contact me if you have any question. And I will be more than happy. I'll be, I, I will be more than happy. I am going to be very happy to answer your question. If you have any question about this, you know, I can answer your question and give you any answer, you know, and help you to understand this calendar much, much, much better. You know, if you have any question and if you need a place to worship, if you don't find any congregation in your area, we do have an online congregation. We have an online congregation that we do online. So you can use your phone to join us on Sabbath day and on the new moon day and on the feast day. If you would like to join us, then contact me, send me a message on, or, uh, however, you know, through the phone or through email, or through WhatsApp, through the Skype. Give me a call if you would like to join us for worship. 
you are more than welcome to join us uh, just let me know and i will tell you what you need to do uh use your phone and download skype the skype app you can use that skype to contact me and uh basically if you would like to keep the sabbath and you cannot find a congregation in your area there's nobody in your area that you know or there's no church that you know that you can go to on the real sabbath day you can contact me and we have an online church we have an online congregation where i can add you in it doesn't matter where you are you could be in africa you could be in america you could be in europe you could be in asia doesn't matter where you are as long as you have an internet access as long as you have internet access you can join us as long as you have internet on your phone or your computer you can join us give me a call send me a message i will add you and you will be able to worship with other brothers and sisters who are also keeping the sabbath this way on the sabbath day we gather together on new moon days we gather together on feast days we gather together and we do it online it's all done online all you need to have is to just have internet on your phone just like you do right now you know give me a call and i will add you into the online congregation and if you have any question concerning this sabbath or if you want to understand it more or if you have anything that is bothering you regarding this calendar if you have any concern regarding this calendar if you have any concern or anything that is bothering you or any question or anything that you don't understand regarding this calendar give me a call and i would definitely uh, get back to you if i don't answer you immediately i will give you a call back and answer your question i thank our heavenly father for everything i thank you for your interest in this video uh if possible i will encourage you to share this video if you have a social media share this video on your social media if you have a a, 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 a facebook uh, instagram youtube whatever share this video and let other people know about god's calendar let our other people know about the calendar of our heavenly father let other people know that saturday is not the sabbath and sunday is not the sabbath and if you have any question you are more than welcome to give me a call i thank our heavenly father for everything and i thank you for watching this video and i look forward to hearing for, from you i look forward to answering your questions if you have any concerns or any question regarding this calendar you are more than welcome to give me a call all praises to our heavenly father i thank our heavenly father for everything i give the most high all the glory and all the honor for opening our eyes and allowing us to 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 to, to receive back his calendar that we lost and to worship him on the right day all praises to our heavenly father feel free to give me a call if you have any question share this video on your social media i thank our heavenly father for everything all praises all glory all honor to our heavenly father for everything all praises to him